everyone, Mr. Stevenson here once again with a video update for... When Emily Stram and Bella Whistler please come to the office. <laughs> All right, let's try this one more time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey guys. Mr. Stevenson back with another video update, this time for Wednesday, March 7th. This video is meant for you if you missed class, wanted a quick refresher, or if you're one of those kids who was paying attention today and heard that I might drop a little hint about tomorrow's quiz in today's video. So let's just jump right in. Today's class started off with a bell ringer and some review on the Stamp Act and on the New England colonies and specifically locating the city of Boston within those New England colonies. We then jumped into looking at the timeline and exploring how the French and Indian War was the spark that lit the fuse leading to the big explosion that would be the Revolutionary War and you were asked to fill in two of those effects of the French and Indian War, the Proclamation of 1763 and the Stamp Act of 1765. The mainstay of today's uh, class was an activity in which you were asked to take a stand. I gave you guys a piece of paper with four individuals on it, a slave working on a tobacco plantation in North Carolina, a poor white former indentured servant in Boston who worked for a blacksmith, a wealthy woman in Connecticut who was married to a banker and also a landowner, and an Iroquois chief in New York. And your task was to determine whether or not those individuals uh, would have been loyalist, meaning that they were loyal to the king and opposed to fighting the revolution, or if they would have been patriots, they would have been fighting to overthrow the British government in North America, or if they would have been neutral and not taken aside. And so after discussing that with a partner for five minutes, I asked the entire class to come forward to the front of the classroom and then take a stand on one side of the classroom or the other or right there in the middle uh, if they thought that one individual was a loyalist, a patriot, or uh, someone neutral there. Uh, so that was really kind of the, the by and large meat of today's lesson. And so really, let's, uh, let's just kind of jump down the list here. So first you had a slave working on a tobacco plantation in North Carolina. That individual likely would have been neutral. A slave's main concern uh, wasn't so much about taxation or representation, but simply liberty, freedom. Their main concern was the fact that they were owned by another human being. They were another human being being owned by another human being. I cannot stress that enough. And so oftentimes they were neutral or sometimes if a slave holding patriot uh, was known to be a patriot, the British would offer freedom to slaves who would rise up and fight against the slaveholder uh, and offer freedom in that sense. And so freedom, liberty, was truly the main driving force for slaves. Uh, so uh, they would have been neutral or kind of leaning loyal to, uh, loyalist in that sense, uh, but they did also, slaves did fight for both sides being promised uh, a bit of freedom. freedom was the main thing. Uh, secondly, a poor white former indentured servant in Boston who works for a blacksmith. This individual would likely have been a patriot. So they left Britain, uh, they left Britain in the first place to become an indentured servant, which tells us already that life in Britain for them was pretty hard and pretty awful that they would risk coming over and serving as an indentured servant for uh, the length of their contract. Secondly, when we're talking about the context and geography there, this person is living in Boston. 
They are right in the heart, right where the revolutionary zeal and revolutionary fire is burning at its very hottest. Uh, so this individual would definitely have been a patriot. Uh, third, a wealthy woman from Connecticut who is married to a banker and a landowner. Uh, this individual, uh, they've, they, life is pretty good for them. Life is pretty good for this woman. So uh, obviously she's like, hey, the status quo works. The status quo is, is pretty all right. So someone who is wealthy and has things going for them, they're not exactly the ones who are going to be fired up thinking, you know what? Yeah, let's overthrow this whole system and start anew because, you know, everything is going so well. Uh, so this person would certainly have been a loyalist, although a number of students did make the case that also this person would have been neutral in a sense. Uh, and I could see where they were coming from, where uh, if they sided with the losing side, they could lose it all. And so wanting to keep neutral, uh, possibly for self-preservation's sake, could have been one of the ways that they looked at that. Uh, and lastly, an Iroquois chief in New York. Um, and one of the things here is that the Iroquois already had a working relationship with a number of British officers, meaning they likely would have been fighting as loyalists. Okay, the fighting of the French and Indian War, the ever expanding co colonists who are disregarding the British Proclamation of 1763 and other instances of the British government saying, hey, whoa, slow down, don't go out into the frontier, we can't protect you there. We have reserved number of those lands also as Indian territory, so please do not be going out there. Uh, so the Iroquois recognized the British were trying to stem the tide of colonial settlers coming out into Native American territories, and uh, also they already had a working relationship with British officers from the French and Indian War, uh, because as you guys remember from early on in the school year, uh, the Brit the Iroquois certainly did not have uh, a great affinity for the French due to Champlain and his folly in fighting against the Iroquois back in the early 1600s. Uh, so there's that. And lastly, I know what many of you guys are awaiting, and that is uh, tomorrow's quiz. Now, five multiple choice questions, two short answer questions, but before I get to the short answer questions, I do want to say uh, thank you so much for the card, guys. Uh, I really appreciate it, and really, you know, really happy to 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 be thanked in that sense uh, for for taking you guys to see Black Panther. Uh, really enjoyed that, and that was a, a full team effort. Uh, I cannot take the credit for that. That was uh, we all played a role. Mr. Carlisto, Ms. Kaczynski, Ms. Leahy, uh, and Ms. Nicholas all really played a role in, in putting that together. So uh, thank you very much for the card. Uh, it, it really means a lot and, and I really appreciate that. Um, but back to your quiz. So those of you who have lasted this long in today's video, I wanna say thank you and uh, you stuck around because there are two short answer questions on the quiz. The first, is why did the British Parliament adopt the Stamp Act of 1765? And the second is what types of taxes were the colonists willing to pay? So remember, no taxation without representation was their call, and wars are mighty expensive. With that, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.